Hello, and in this video, we're going to uh, be talking about uh, using SQL queries within Inforx ICM to update models for capacity planning. Uh, just capacity planning being such a common thing among utilities and the engineers that work for those utilities. Uh, so in this, who is this for? Utilities really just looking to automate anything to uh, just streamline their workflows. Uh, same thing with engineering consultants who are doing that same kind of process for their, uh, their utilities. And then just any mo modeler who would be interested in being able to reduce the amount of manual work um, and human error that can be introduced when doing things like this. Uh, so taking a look at the workflow. First step is just to get a need to run an existing sanitary or combined sewer system uh, and really find the bottlenecks and, and using Inforx ICM and some of the metrics it reports to be able to highlight uh, where exactly those bottlenecks are. Second step here is going to be to write a SQL query. This is a fairly basic SQL query that we'll go through, uh, but it's kind of some of the highlights of uh, some nice features that can be included with that. Uh, so within this, we'll be able to also include some data management techniques as well as creating output files of the results. Lastly, uh, just hypothetically looking at comparing the results uh, from the uh, output files and comparing that with the existing infrastructure. Capacity planning is one of the main things that any uh, modeling project of a sewer system is likely to encounter. Um, and in InfoWorks ICM, we can leverage SQL queries to uh, help us uh, perform those at CIP and uh, come up with that list of projects. So uh, first off, we'll look at the max surcharge state. So uh, this is a metric that gets uh, reported in Inforx ICM. It can be between 0 and 1, it can be 1 or it can be 2. And, and the value 2 really represents where the problem areas exist. It, it means that the flow through the pipe at the uh, max uh, flow is greater than the just free flow Manning's in calculation. So pretty good indication of where bottlenecks are occurring. So I have a network uh, model uh, pulled up right here. And if I drag on one of the results that I've already run, I can also look at the results from, from that simulation. So having both the uh, modeling data as well as the results data here. If I drag on that SQL core we just had, it's gonna select all of those pipes. And if we pull up the link grid here, you can see all those pipes do have that max surcharge state of two. Um, uh, another note, it is 122 uh, that have been selected here, so that'll come into play once we uh, look at upsizing the pipes. If I open up another SQL query, uh, let's just name it something simple like upsize pipes, and then open that up. Uh, this is going to uh, apply to my conduits. Uh, and then first off, we want to select the conduits uh, with some particular metrics to it, the max surcharge state, uh, max surcharge uh, greater than or equal to two. Uh, and I also want to select conduits, uh, conduit widths that have uh, less than 17 inches. This is really just a way to differentiate uh, how, uh, how I wanna increase my pipes, all the ones that are below 17 inches, increasing them just by three, three inches, and then everything else above that, increasing them by six inches. So next thing we need to do is update the selected set, and the conduit width is the field that we're gonna interact with, and we're gonna set that equal to the conduit width again, but plus three inches there. Also wanna set the conduit uh, flag so that I'm maintaining uh, where this data came from. I've already made a, a flag called SQL, so we're gonna add that in there. Uh, any field that needs to change the flag, it's just the field name and then under dash uh, flag right there. Uh, from there, I'm going to deselect everything because we're going to go to the next step of uh, selecting everything that has a uh, um, max search or state of two, uh, but this time it's going to be everything that's greater than seven. Uh, we're also going to update the um, size that we're updating the size to increase it by six inches there. Uh, do another deselect and then select where that conduit uh, width flag is equal 
to 60 uh, or to SQL. And this is going to set us up so that we can actually produce a file. It's going to select all of those pipes that we've just updated using the SQL query. Uh, and then if we do select selected, I can do an upstream node ID uh, in a table. I can do the downstream node in the table, the asset ID, and just for fun, the conduit with I'm going to take that from the table uh, conduit. Oop. And then into the file. And it's just a simple path here, um, just in my C drive. Uh, SQL um, needed CIP backslash cip.csv and with that I test it it has a valid syntax to it uh, so we're all good to go there uh, if I do now drag this on uh, it is going to update uh, those pipes with the uh, new data uh, I do need to commit the data uh, let's say this is upsize round one and then hit OK. I meant to validate it. Just to, so that we can use it in a run. Uh, so we're going to validate it. Already committed the data there. And then if we come into here, commit that really quick. If we come into our run, update to the latest version, uh, we're going to rerun that simulation there. If I hit OK. It just takes a few minutes to run here at the bottom. Go ahead and close out of these tabs. And once that finishes, we can open up that as well. We had 122 pipes before that we selected that were uh, fully surcharged. And so now we can see uh, if I drag on that query, uh, we now only have uh, 89 selected so reduced our uh, the number of uh, pipes in there that have um, that have that uh, additionally we can see the uh, SQL query there um, with the flag indicating that these are the pipes that have been updated via that SQL query uh, last thing I'll touch on is the location of that file uh, so like I said, it was a pretty simple area, uh, just in my C drive, automated CIP, you get the timestamp there, matches our time that, that we've just run. If I open it up, you can see all that information that we specified, the upstream, downstream asset ID, uh, and then also that conduit width. So wrapping up things from today, uh, the biggest benefits of doing something like this would be to reduce the amount of manual entry and letting the, the software uh, do uh, the data management and data uh, manipulation for us and then also just increasing productivity, uh, speeding up that process of updating these models. Uh, now this was a relatively short video uh, with a limited amount of inputs that we had in our SQL query. Uh, so some of the next steps could be to look at expanding that query. Uh, this could be uh, using spatial queries. There is the spatial capability in here as you see on that dialog, to be able to uh, look at where pipes are, where they're close together, uh, being able to group projects that way. Uh, you can certainly uh, increase the amount of parameters that you're looking at to uh, upsize the pipes and, and do more of a complex type of uh, analysis there. And then you could also think about including additional parameters like uh, cost estimates and using some of those user text and user number fields in Inforx ICM in order to um, uh, continue to build out the SQL query.